Okay, and we're live. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining another MSU Science Festival Afternoon Science Snack. My name is Catherine, I'm with the Science Festival. Today I'm also joined by Roxanne Chun from the Science Festival. And today we are so excited to welcome Tim and Nicole from Detroit Hives. Hi. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> good, good. Um, so before we dive in, um, do you mind telling everyone uh, a little bit about yourselves and about Detroit Hives and then uh, we'll dive right in. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, my name is Timothy Jackson. And my name is Nicole Lindsay. And we're both Detroit natives. I was born and raised on the Northwest side of Detroit, whereby I attended Wayne State University. And I studied advertising and commercial photography for over 12 years. And I attended Open University, where I have a degree in psychology. So you're probably wondering, how do we get in this magical world of conservation? Well, it all stemmed from an article that we saw in the city of Detroit announcing that the city currently had 90,000 vacant lots and that they currently didn't have a budget to tend or to place new businesses and home in these vacant lots. They were looking for local residents to buy back the side lot, nonprofit organizations or community block associations to reactivate these vacant lots in hopes of re eliminating blight and crime in the community. Nicole and I saw this as an opportunity and we said, hey, we can figure a cool project out to give back to our community, to help eliminate blight and crime. We thought about all types of creative ideas from a peacock farm, an outdoor photography studio, but all these were great ideas that we had on our vision board. And however, we just never really acted on these ideas until it got personal. I got sick with a cough and a cold that I cannot get rid of. I tried everything and came across the magical powers of honey. From there, Nicole thought it'd be a good idea to change from a bacon lot into a bee farm. And since then, we pollinated Detroit Hives, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whereby we work to create sustainable communities and bee populations. And we do this by transforming or reimagining vacant landscape into educational apiaries or pollinator friendly spaces. We do believe in bee diversity. Great. Um, well, we oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dive right into your presentation if you'd like. Absolutely, absolutely. So right. before, we, before we begin, we started our operation in 2017 and we've expanded in, in 13 locations and we currently manage 45 beehives here in the city of Detroit. And we do have a short presentation we'd like to share with you all. One second. Oop, try it again. Okay. And while it's loading, good to go. So again, who are we? We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization co-founded in 2017 by me, Timothy Paul Jackson, and Nicole Lindsay. We're two native Detroiters with a vision to create sustainable communities and bee populations by reimagining vacant landscape and the educational pollinator-friendly spaces and apiaries. Very briefly, we simply believe a healthy future for bees reflects a healthy future for humanity. The health of those in our inner cities, specifically people of color, is often the last to be considered. It's our mission to change this. By transforming vacant lots into urban bee farms, we not only support the conservation of honeybees, but we revitalize neighborhoods, where Detroit hives, where a honeybee education and conservation initiative that engages urban communities in our mission by creating cultural experiences that are both educational and relatable. So let's talk about our three core focus areas, starting with education. Without education, you know, it helps us get over our fear of bees, it allows us to engage in the community, and it just takes us to another level of bee conservation. But it starts with education, conservation, and community development. We call this our three P system, which supports people, planet, and pollinators. So starting with education, in 2018, we partnered with the Skimming Foundation and prototype 
Be the Change Conservation um, Conservation Fellowship uh, Program. And this is where we took on six students from Mumford High School and engaged them and equipped them to learn how to combat vacant lots in their own community. But we also backed it up by giving this group of students $1,200 to learn how to combat their own vacant lot in their community as well. So we empowered them to learn how to transform their own issues in their own community. We also found a way to develop Bemoji. It's an emoji sticker app designed to raise be awareness through mobile messaging. And through this platform, we've been able to spread be awareness to over 100,000 downloaders to understand a better understanding of beekeeping and bee conservation. And right now it is available on the iMessage store. Move it along. Also through education, we created Detroit Hives in partnership with Spruce Tone Films. It's a documentary about our story. It's been screening over 25 national film festivals and is currently on tour with Mountain Films and screening over 200 countries. What's great about this documentary is that a curriculum has been paired with this documentary to educate grades six to eight on the importance of bee conservation. And here is just a few lists of some of the film festivals that has been featured on from National Geographic Short Film Showcase to EarthX Films to the Free Film Festival to also the Ask Mountain Film Festival Winter Edition. And also Capital City Film Festival, which is in Lansing. Awesome. So let's talk about conservation. Let's get straight to the bees. Detroit is the place to be. And what we mean by that, of course, it's a great place to live in, but with over 70,000 vacant lots, these vacant lots are contributing to, vacant, to our pollinators, providing great sources of nectar and pollen in the forms of chicories, um, goldenrod from uh, Clover. clovers, dandelions, and also a lot of neighbors that have relocated or maybe passed on, but a lot of those perennials are still there on some of these vacant lots, providing great sources of nectar and pollen. And unlike most rural areas, Detroit is an area that has so much green land that haven't been sprayed with any chemicals, any harmful chemicals like pesticides, insecticides, or any kind of fungicides. So it's actually providing, um, boosting bee populations, but also supporting biodiversity. And just wanna highlight some of our, some of our locations. This particular location is at our Forward Resource Engagement Center. So this is a great place where we're able to educate inner city students and community residents on the importance of bee conservation. And also whereby Ford Motor Company sponsored three beehives. Also another location that's near and dear to me is Mumford High School, whereby we sponsor two hives at this high school to help educate the students on the importance of bee conservation. Now moving on to community development. It's all about, it's more than just about the bees. It's about how do you engage the community residents into beekeeping and sustainability. And it's not just about putting hives in certain locations, it's about how do you engage and get the community involved and get them rally up to get back to their, to their environment. Our secret sauce is through events and through engagement. Starting with our first project called the East Warren Apiary. This particular project located on East Warren McCollum, as in seeing a picture above was a vacant lot. It was, uh, it was overlooked, it was abandoned, it had tons of trash and blight on this particular property. And most residents, they wanna see their community cleaned up. They wanna see trash removed. They wanna see people care about the community. So by transforming the space into a green space, it bought the buy-in for the community. They want to see children learning or having a local place where they can partake in an outdoor learning experience. And this one vacant lot has been transformed into an educational hub whereby we hosted well over 600 tours, providing youth and community with an opportunity to learn about bees. Also with conservation, people in the residence when you have so many vacant lots in your community, it plays on your psychology. You feel less about yourself. You're more able, you're more likely to 
contribute, uh, contribute to, to blight, right? and you, you really just don't really feel good when you see trash in your neighborhood, but also it promotes crime. According to this article with Michigan State University today, it said well-kept vacant lots can help reduce crime. So most residents, one of the number one or the top three things they want to see in a community is a place for their children to be safe. It's also, they want to help reduce crime and eliminate blight. So that's one thing, one great thing about our project, it does all three. It helps eliminate blight by activating the space. It promotes an educational space, but also it beautifies the neighborhood. And also, many people want to, what we love about our project is that it's open to the community. Anyone can book tours and learn about bees. And this one particular uh, picture, we have Jamar Braggs, who is a community resident, and he saw us working and doing one of the eyes, and he just simply had questions. He wanted to learn more about bees. And that's the misnotion that most people think that uh, most people are afraid of bees, but people really want to know. They, they're interested. They want to learn. But sometimes these opportunities don't present themselves in certain, in certain neighborhoods. So by placing this apiary in the East Warren community on the east side of Detroit, it gives them the opportunity to engage with nature and learn about diverse subjects like bee conservation. And then one of the um, events that we have to engage our community is bee music. Um, our bee music event was led by Ife Best. He is a world renowned drummer, um, African drummer. And we had an opportunity to have him come out to the bee farm. We also invited the community out um, to engage them about bee conservation and the, the connection between the drumming of the bees and the African drums. So inside of a honeybee hive, when bees began to slack off, the older bees will begin to start drumming to get them active. And so, and then there's also the spiritual connection between the drumming and the natural sounds of the earth and the buzzing sound of the bees. Awesome. And so we had some people from the community out here dancing to the drums. So it was a fun, engaging way to eliminate fear that comes with uh, bees. Also, it's an inviting space. When you think about most farms, it's excluded. It's somewhere where it's not really open to the community or to even dance or have fun. So it's about creating inclusive spaces for people and all living things. Now, we are on a mission to inspire the next generation of leaders in sustainability. Our secret sauce is through art, music, and technology. Um, so with that being said, let's talk about mini murals. So what is mini murals? Mini murals is an art initiative designed to engage local artists on honeybee conservation through a social curriculum. This year we collaborated and commissioned 10 local artists from Detroit to paint mini murals on all of our hives. This gives artists a new perspective of how to visualize art through untraditional platforms. And what we observed from this initiative is that these artists were not aware of the importance of bee conservation until this project. And upon the completion of this project, the local artists gained an appreciation for bee conservation and learned ethical ways to support the pollinators. Um, Mini Murals also works to engage youth on bee conservation. Our apiaries now serve as a living art gallery to the public. So let's highlight a few of our Mini Murals that are in the local city of Detroit. This particular art mural was done by international art artist Rashawn Rucker. This beautiful African inspired mini mural was done by Tony Hooligan from the Hooligans. Mm -hmm. And his work can be found all over Detroit from the Eastern Market, um, from Southwest Detroit. You name it. Yeah, all over Detroit, his artwork is. Uh display. Also, we've done work with Rely Detroit, who is a CCS alumni, done this beautiful work with a Sharpie. And the reason why we, we have a lot of our hives done by art is that that's one of our ways we connect with a lot of, a lot of youth or diverse uh, different types of audiences. Um, maybe some people that may not have an interest in bees, but they may have an interest in art. And this now allows us to have that conversation about art and conservation or just want to come look at some cool art. Yeah. 
Lastly. Yeah, this last um, artist piece um, was done by Inubisi Okoye, another world-renowned artist as well um, from the Detroit. And he has art all over Eastern Market. Um, we actually had some time for him to actually display this art on our highs. It actually says, honey makes life sweeter. And on the other side, it says, creating for the queen. And you can also find some of his artwork uh, on the side of the comments. Inside and on the side of the comments. So moving forward, let's talk about education and civic engagement. It's about creating a space or how do you get the community residents or others to have a part in your project through ownership, giving them an opportunity to feel like they are part of it to partake and volunteer. So our educational hub is not just about bee conservation, about learning, it's about giving back and getting your hands dirty. So we've done some spring cleanups with Yukon. We've been done tours with students from Duke University. And we also had some volunteer days with University of Liggett. And so this is something that they do annual for us since 2018. Yep. And so with their 11th graders, they all get a chance to come out to our um, properties or our um, sites and actually help us with those uh, developing and cleaning up And then also Jack and Jill of America, um, their Detroit chapter came out to learn about our project um, to help us do some volunteer work. And also Ali Financial. Ali Financial is a banking institution that helps secure uh, uh, banks and loans. I'm sorry, financial institution that helps secure loans for personal and businesses. And in this case, we want to partner to do a volunteer project where they help secure a partner food bank. And then we also did a honeybee tour with uh, Roper School from Bloomfield, Michigan. Um, there was a fourth grade class that first mm -hmm. came out that loved it so much that they told uh, some of their siblings and their friends that were in fifth grade that they'd come out and visit us as well. Also, this class helped us name our queen bees. So some of our queen bees that were named was Cardi B, Beyonce, Queen Elizabeth, Patricia, and Patricia. And Beatrice. <laughs> Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we also host uh, tours for Wayne State University and also a part of the Elwer Bound program. And here is University of Liggett again. This is at a, another location of ours. This was last year, and we had the new 11th grade class of that year um, come by and do some volunteer work at this particular um, project site. And this project site is called our State Fair in Hoover Community Garden. It's a commercial parking lot that just sits under an acre at 32,800 square feet. And it will be transformed to community garden where residents can grow their own food at no charge. We just ask that they maintain and, and grow something and eat it. <laughs> so let's talk about some of our accomplishments. We expanded in 13 locations, managing over 45 hives here in the city of Detroit. We hosted over 1,200 honeybee tours for local residents and students at our East Warren Apiary. We also developed Bemoji, um, a bee awareness emoji sticker app. We educated over 2,000 local students through our Be the Change program. We also partnered with Spruce Tone Films to create Detroit Hives, an international documentary. Received the Spirit of Detroit Award. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, the 2019 Impact Award by EarthX Film. 2019 Keep, Keep Michigan Beautiful President's Plaque Award. We also founded National Urban Beekeeping Day. Which is recognized and celebrated annually on July 19th. We also partnered with the Gerald R. Ford School of Public Policy to pass a resolution with Detroit City Council, recognizing our city, Detroit, as an official bee city. What an accomplishment. We also delivered over 100 bee well care packages to our local heroes, frontline responders, and healthcare workers. Uh, we expanded in Kansas City, Missouri as Mohives KC. 
We received the 2020 Environmental Excellence Award from the National Association of Environmental Professionals, received the 2020 Social Impact Media Award, the Telly Award recipient of two civil awards, Social Impact and Diversity and Inclusion. Wow, and it feels great. Moving along, let's talk about some of our buzz. Our story has went viral, and here are just a few national and international outlets that shared our buzz. Starting from National Geographic to AJ Plus to USA Today to even have balanced living. And with some of that buzz, it allowed us to leverage some partners and sponsors. From the city of Detroit to Airbnb to Slow's Barbecue to Peace Tree Parks to Rose Pest Solutions to Brilliant Detroit and of course Boys and Girls Club. So this year has been quite challenging due to COVID, but we want to still move forward. We've been able to find ways to pivot. Um, this year marks the 100th anniversary at Detroit being dubbed the Motor City. And so with our, with our uh, initiatives in making Detroit a B city, we wanted to find a way to merge the two together. With Detroit being a Motor City, but how do we also tie in Detroit being a B city? We found a way to do so. And we've done this by creating Detroit's first Motor City Garden. Detroit's Motor City Garden will consist of a 1981 uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass and where we're upcycling it to be a pollinator habitat. The internal guts have been removed and inside of it was a set of housing that would sit soil and native wildflowers. This particular Motor City Garden will sit close by our East Warren Apiary on the uh, McCullen side street um, actually, McCullen Street, and we're transforming this vacant lot to serve as a pollinator habitat. On this project, we do have UConn, Penn State, and Team GM Cares, also volunteers from University Liggett, volunteers from Alley Financial, and also volunteers from Ford Motor Company Fund to help support this project. Also, in spite of COVID-19, we found ways to give back. A lot of people have been affected, just like us with COVID-19. We found a way to also tie in what we do at Detroit Hives, as well as using epic therapy as a solution to give back to those that may have um, been affected by COVID-19. One great thing about honey is that it provides so many benefits to the immune system. And also with candles, provide respiratory therapy. We've been able to give to our local heroes, our frontline responders, and um, healthcare workers starting with firefighters, our postal service workers, and just community residents on the street. We deliver over 100 of these B-Well care packs, but a special thanks to IOBI um, organization whereby we raised well over $4,000 to make this happen. Um, and then also uh, this year, 2020, um, we partnered up American Pollinator Protection Pro Project or campaign. And uh, we created this sign so that people could know that their garden is being used for a, a site where bees and pollinators can get their food source. Because sometimes when you think of a wildflower habitat, some people may see this as an unkept environment or may see it as weeds. We want to create a fun, engaging, cool, updated sign to attract people to say weeds are cool and they have a purpose. And this weeds is the bees need serves that purpose. It states that these plants have been chosen to support our pollinators and to, for more information, to visit our partners at pollinator.org. But along with the hashtags Wildflower Wednesday and Bees Needs, this sign is available for free for you to download, to take to your local printer and print it out and place it in your garden. We will place a link uh, to where you can download the sign in our chat box. Also, due to COVID-19, we've had to cancel, unfortunately, we had to cancel all of our educational tours, but that didn't stop us. We found ways to pivot to create virtual educational experiences. So through our beta change, we created a virtual education course and we partnered with the boys, I'm sorry, with the Cub Scouts of PAC 1438 
to create not only an educational course, but some call to action on how they can save the bees and pollinators from where they're only on home. And what they were able to do is create their own water source, but two, identify three native plants in their own backyard and understand the benefit of those, of those native plants. And here are some of the photos of their call to action and their water source that they created. And one of it states that um, they had to list three benefits of the native plants. One was a swamp milkweed, a creeping Charlie, and an apple blossom tree that both provide benefit to our environment. Mm -hmm. The code. And then um, we are super excited. Um, last year, we um, founded National Urban Beekeeping Day, and it is going to be celebrated next month, July the 19th. So mm -hmm. this is going to be our first year celebrating this um, day that we co-founded. Detroit Hives. And we're currently working to put together a plan of virtual events. But in the meantime, here's how you can participate and share the buzz. Number one, share the buzz. Tell others about it. Two. Two, you can plant Black Eyed Susans it is our organization's national flower. So when you um, plant that Black Susan, we want people to take a picture of it, use um, tag us in it so we can see it and show, our, show their support for our pollinators and for our organization and celebrating National Urban Beekeeping Day. And lastly, support your local urban beekeepers. Identify them. Tell them thank you. Like their page. Share their page. Buy some honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we welcome you guys to join the hive. Follow us on social media at Detroit Hives. Visit our website at DetroitHives.org or you can also learn, you can how to sponsor a hive, you can donate or team up, team up with us with volunteer opportunities. Yeah. And that pretty much end. We'll let, we'll end it from here and leave it open for Q and A. <clears throat> we had a question from Shauna. She wants, you were talking about the drumming and the bees start to drum inside the hive. She wants to know, um, do, do they need a certain beat? Oh, so <laughs> it's not us that's actually drumming. It's actually them. Yeah. The, the older uh, worker bees, bees begin to do a drumming, like a, they began to be inside the hive themselves, the actual bees. And that kind of rallies up the, the younger slacker bees to get to be more productive. Yeah. So it's actually the bees that actually create their own drumming. We just use that ideology with uh, an African drummer to tie those two things together. Awesome. And I have, oh, go ahead. No, so it kind of reminds me of like when I was younger and my mom was cleaning up. First thing she turned on is the music to get us going so we can uh, start cleaning up. <laughs> That's true. That does help, doesn't? Music always helps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> working out. Yeah. 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 Um, with the murals on your beehives, does that affect um, the bees at all? Do they? come home to different, do they look for their murals or do they we know? Like to think so. We <laughs> like to think that yeah. they, they they admire the beautiful artwork. However, that doesn't affect them in knowing which hive to go into. They know which hive based off their GPS on how they um, set their, their navigation, but also the center of the queen that belongs to that respective hive. Yeah. I think it would make it a lot easier because they it's not all the plain, you know, painted white hives. It has all these unique designs on it so they can automatically know like, oh, this is my hive and check it out, it looks better than yours. So I can see them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if they crave to go to, oh, their mural looks better. I want to head up that hive. <laughs> I'd like to think that. All right. Well, we love all our uh, murals though. They're also beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> As on the same arts theme, I know honeybees are just said to do a dance to tell the other bees where the nectar is around. Have you ever thought of doing like a dance program incorporating the bee dance in with your dancing? We were thinking of something like that. Maybe yeah. not a dance program, maybe uh, just a cool dance that we can engage others to do with a hashtag, but nothing to a extent of a program. Well, that, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, post your bee dance here or something. That would be cool. Yeah. For 
National Dance Day. I think that comes up in the summer sometime. <laughs> oh, okay. I look out for that. <laughs> yeah, do a little TikTok video. Yeah, yeah that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if somebody wants to get started in their own um, neighborhood, how do they go about starting a reclaim a vacant lot and, and do a beehive? Very good question. The first thing I would say is talk to your neighbors. Let them know what your plans are. Um, make sure that they're not opposed to that so that you don't have no type of pushback. Two, I would say is uh, do a little, a little bit of the research on it. Um, maybe contact a local beekeeping association, express to them your plans, um, take some courses. And once you take some courses and the community is okay with it, I'll say dive right in. And is there special, do you have to go to like your city government to get special permits or is it, guys, it probably depends on each city? It depends on different cities. I know here in the city of Detroit, there's no special permits. There is a, a, a zoning uh, ordinance where you can only do so many hives per square footage and it has to be paired with a garden, uh, a meadow or some type of uh, floral uh, uh, scenery. Okay. It just can't just be hives by itself. Awesome. So no, I've been working a lot on my, my garden this summer um, and you've mentioned a couple, but I'm wondering what are some really great um, flowers and options to plant that will help our bee population? Herbs, herbs, herbs. Well, the senses of a honeybee is a hundred times stronger than ours. They can smell the sweet nectar of flowers miles away. And sometimes as forger bees, it's the most exciting job because you get to explore the world. You get to leave the hive. You get to get some fresh air and travel and see things but it's also the most dangerous job because you get to leave the hive. You don't have all your friends with you. So you can be uh, open to any type of threat like a yellow jacket, a dragonfly, uh, a raindrop can break your wings and, or a human or anything that can potentially damage your life. So while foraging, it can be very stressful. Uh, for one, heat exhaustion, um, just stressful trying to dodge a predator. So it's great to plant things like lavender they have a very strong uh, aroma smell. And what lavender does, it relaxes them, just like it helps relax us when really stressed out. So I place a uh, plant lavender. That's definitely one great one as well. What would you lavender, say? Lavender, um, lemon balm, oh, yeah. cone flowers. I love cone flowers. Um, barrage or borage, some people say it. Um, mm -hmm. They love catmint, um, peppermint. We've had our hives and our honey taste just like peppermint <laughs> because they were sourced from so much peppermint. And then when you do the, the herbs, that flower, um, it also repels unwanted insects. So like the mosquitoes and the spiders ants. and the ants. And so it's, it, it benefits your garden and then the, the bees also get a good full of nectar and pollen from it. So basil is another good plant to... Uh having your gun as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, we had a question from Brandy. Um, she wants to know, do bees still fly around during rainstorms since we just got a huge storm that came through the Lansing area? <laughs> no, so they can't fly around during uh, rainstorms, especially when it's those heavy raindrops because it will actually tear their wings apart. And so right before, because they know the weather before we do. Yeah, um, they're in tune with the universe. Yes. So we can tell, like, we're at our bee farm. We see a lot of the forage bees are starting to come in. And especially um, also when there's high winds, high winds can be harmful to them as well. And so a lot of times when we have high winds, you won't see a lot of them out. But if it's like a light rain, like a, um, a sprinkle, then they'll still be out. Yeah, you'll still have some bow there and one still yeah. forage. But typically <laughs> when it rains really heavy, um, they'll, it'll just be an inside day for them. They'll stay yeah. inside. Do bees need a water source? Like I know for butterflies and birds that they encourage you to have some type of water source for them. Do bees need water? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just like us humans, we get dehydrated as well. So bees, they definitely need a water source while they're out foraging. They collect that water, they bring it back to the hive, but they also use it to regulate the temperature of their hive. They collect uh, droplets of water and they use their wings to serve as a, as a natural air conditioner to cool off their hive if it gets too hot. So yeah. 
It definitely need yeah. water to stay hydrated as well. Definitely need water. And that was one of the little projects that we had with the oh, yeah. Cub Scout. Um, they did, they make their own little water source. So if you can get something as like a Frisbee. A shallow bowl. A bowl. Um, you know, the base of a plant. Um, Container. Get, I can't even think of the name. Base. A uh, pot. <laughs> you can use that. <laughs> take some marbles, some rocks um, in there, and then place some shallow water in there because they are great flyers and not great swimmers. So they need something to land on while they're drinking their water. So there's also something to keep in mind. Oh, um, that's a great idea. Don't, yeah. Alarm, but don't, yeah, but don't be alarmed if you don't see them drinking it right, right away. Um, because they like for that water to get just a little bit dirty because they need that minerals in it that they're looking for because That's I salt. placed like fresh water out there and they were like not out there and then I probably like the <laughs> next day or so then they're all in it so yeah yeah they like for it to sit and collect enzymes and the minerals yeah and I see them actually fly some muddy water over the clean water and I'm like why are you over there in the muddy water but I guess that muddy water has more minerals that they need mm -hmm. yeah. interesting and then where do you, where do the bees go in the wintertime? Do they winter over in your hives or do you have to move them somewhere? Do they go south for the winter? Where, where do they go? We do not transfer bees in the wintertime. We just overwinterize them. Um, during the winter, honeybees begin to create their own heat source, but sometimes they do need a little bit of support. And one ways you can support the honeybees during the winter is to make sure your hives are properly ventilated and insulated. And what ways we do that is add additional boxes. We add either a, a stable screen bottom to insert wood chips because inside that hive, they will have a heat source that'll be so hot, it create condensation. And what that does is the water falls down onto the bees, it can freeze them. They can tolerate cold temperatures, but they can't tolerate being, you know, uh, cold and wet. Uh, okay. And then some also, some commercial beekeepers um, in Michigan will actually take their bees down south where they need it for um for almonds or in california for the almonds and in florida for the oranges so they travel around the country while we're having our winters so, so they can still work our year round but we keep ours at our at our location yeah. awesome they don't get to go south for the winter huh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not right. yet you may look into that later but not yet <laughs> and do you sell the honey that you um I don't know if grow is the right word. Um, do you sell that anywhere? Can people get Detroit Hives honey? Very good question. Yes, all of our honey can be purchased online at DetroitHives.org. There you can find our honey, our local uh, dope beeswax candles, and our cool shirts. Detroit's the place to be. But before we harvest that honey, yeah, thank you. But first, we harvest, but before I can't even get it out. Before we harvest our honey. We have a contract with our bees to make sure that we leave 60 to 80 pounds for our bees over the winter. Honey is their store uh, food they need to survive over the winter. So we make sure our girls have enough honey in our hives before we actually harvest um, to sell. Absolutely. And, that, and the sales benefit our organization. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Catherine, do you have any questions? Yeah. Yeah, um, we've got a couple minutes left, so I just want to remind everyone uh, who's tu turning, tuning in, excuse me, um, we can take a couple more questions, so feel free to leave your questions in the comments section. We'll read them off for Tim Nicole. Um, and I just want to say, take a, a moment to say that I am always just absolutely blown away by the work that you do from your education initiatives, your community engagement, um, your events, and your collaborations with artists. Um, so incredible. Um, Thank we you. have a, yeah, of course. Um, we have a lot of um, younger children watching, um, viewers of all ages, actually. Um, if you had any advice for our viewers tuning in who might want to sort of follow in your footsteps as beekeepers or if they want to start a nonprofit, um, what advice would you give? Hmm. Several things, uh, several things. Um, I will say, because our idea of starting a bee farm was pretty wild, um, don't let anybody stop you or hold you back from doing something radical or different. Um, even though people might be unsure or unsupportive in a minute, uh, at the beginning, 
go out there and do it. People call this crazy that we want to start a bee farm. They say that you got to be crazy. Why would you want to do with bees? It was a challenge for us. We wanted to learn something different. We wanted to give back to our community. And we wanted to have a better, a, a better health choice for ourselves. We wanted to be able to source our own local raw honey. Yep, and don't be afraid to learn something new. The, it doesn't matter the age. Always look to be learn for learn something new, because it has definitely pivoted our lives into a completely different direction that we, we never thought we would be in. Also, what's your why? Yeah. Develop a strong why, a reason to what you want to do, mm -hmm. and it will help propel you. Yeah, and, and also deter you from all different type of challenges and barriers that, that many nonprofits face. It's sticking to your mission and your why. And do what you love, something that you love, that you're passionate about, that you can't think of, that you think about all day and night, go ahead and pursue it. <laughs> awesome. Advice. Great advice. <laughs> um, I see you sent over the, um, the pollinator sign. So we'll be putting that in the comments of the live stream here. I know I'm definitely going to download that, um, get that printed off for my yard. <laughs> The same because in my community, everyone likes to have their manicured lawns and I'm the wild one with all the flowers. And now I'll have a sign out there saying why. <laughs> yeah, so you're the reason why we wanted to create these signs because we know a lot of people live in neighborhoods where they like these green pristine lawns, but it doesn't benefit um, any of the pollinators. It's a food desert. Yeah, it's a food desert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we love people like you. <laughs> 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 um, well, we're running out of time here. Um, we have about a couple, just a couple minutes left. Is there anything you want to share with everyone tuning in before we head out here? Hmm. Hey, follow us. <laughs> 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 we're all on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter um, as Detroit Hives. Detroit Hives. Awesome. We will definitely yeah. share that. Yeah. Yeah. And Oh, and I was about to say, create a water source for our pollinators and our bees, and make sure to uh, plant bee-friendly flowers. And learn about the native bees. You know, Michigan is home to over 450 different types of native bees, like bumblebees, sweat bees, carpenter bees, etc. Learn bees. about all of our native bees, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, there are over 5,000 bee species in the United States and over 20,000 bee species in the world. So it's always good to learn about the different type of bees and how they play their part, too. Awesome. That's fantastic. And for those um, still listening on our Facebook feed, um, there's a survey that we'd love you to fill out to let us know how we're doing with our digital festival. And the link is in the comment sections there. So we encourage people to go and fill out our survey so we know how we're doing and what other things they would like us to do. And also for our audience, um, we have another presentation coming up at 4.30 on how to make your own book from the MSU library. So she's going to walk you through how to make a book. And then tomorrow night, we have two Science After Dark, dark talks. So thank you, uh, Detroit Hives, for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Looked like Catherine's screen was frozen there for a second. So that's why I stepped in. So Catherine's back now. So great. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks for having us being a part of the afternoon snack. Yeah. Yep. Always glad to have you. All right. <laughs> All Thanks right. everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>